how close are we talking when we say this asteroid is coming into Earth's orbit? Do we have to be worried about this? No, no, not at this point, luckily, because uh, if something this size were to hit the Earth, you know, it would be a, an apocalypse of, uh, you know, <laughs> of a biblical kind. Well, NASA is making plans to study an asteroid that's set to pass so close to Earth that this hasn't happened since the dawn of recorded history. It's called the God of Chaos Asteroid. So this asteroid, it's fascinating. It's the length of almost four football fields, we understand. It'll pass Earth closer than some satellites. There is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis, named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. Did you hear about this asteroid when it was discovered? No, because that same week was the Indonesian tsunami. That same week. And so rightly so, it did not lead the headlines the way the tsunami did. So here's what will happen. On April 13th, in the year 2029, that's one orbit away from the 2036 date. It has a seven year intersection orbit with Earth. On that date, April 13th, which by the way, is a Friday. Um, so <laughs> April 13th, 2029, this asteroid named Apophis, Named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. It's the size of the Rose Bowl. It'll get close enough to Earth that it will dip below Earth's communication satellites. It'll be the biggest, closest thing ever to come, known to come near Earth. The communication satellites are a geosynchronous orbit. It's about 23,000 miles up. This will come in at 18,000 miles. It'll be visible from Northern Europe. Now, of course, a much bigger asteroid took out the dinosaurs, but we weren't around at the time. So this is in, in the era of observing the cosmos with technology. This will be the closest, biggest thing we'll ever see come by. Now, the orbit we now have for it is uncertain enough because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for. The orbit is uncertain enough so we cannot tell you exactly where that trajectory will be. We know it won't hit Earth. We know it'll be closer than the orbiting satellites. So here's the catch. Its orbit remains sufficiently uncertain. Let me back up. In the possible range of orbits it could have on that fateful day, there is an interval range where if it threads that keyhole, we call it a keyhole, it's a 600 mile, about 600 mi several hundred mile range. If its orbit goes through that range, Earth's gravity will be just right. <laughs> or rather, just wrong. <laughs> so that it will alter its orbit so that it will hit us seven years later. Uh, what do we know about its passing? And is there any cause for alarm here? Well, 20,000 miles in a cosmic sense is very close to the Earth, uh, but there's no cause for alarm. Uh, NASA and other agencies are very good at calculating these trajectories. A uh, very exciting mission for a number of reasons, though. It's going to study the effects of the Earth gravity on these kinds of bodies. One really cool aspect about this mission is the spacecraft, OSIRIS, just completed its mission to asteroid Bennu for the first time took a sample of an asteroid and then in a re-entry vehicle deposited back on the Earth just a few months ago. NASA noticed that, hey, we've still got a pretty good amount of fuel left, so let's not just discard this spacecraft, let's swing it back out into the universe. And they picked uh, Apophis as a, a great candidate to go study. And so in a way, we're getting two missions for almost the price of one. Earth is getting a second moon for a limited time. Astronomers say an asteroid will come close enough to Earth to temporarily enter its orbit Orbit at the end of the month. And it's getting captured by the Earth's gravity and it'll be part of the Earth moon system. It'll orbit the Earth for maybe about two months and then it'll get flung back out. So we get a little teeny tiny little moon for about two months. A rare lunar trifecta in the sky tonight, a super harvest blood moon. This year's harvest moon is also a super moon and a blood moon, which will occur during tonight's partial eclipse. It peaks at about 
1044 Eastern. Sydney is still glowing after a rare super-sized supermoon appeared in our sky last night. The celestial show was hard to miss. A super moon will light up the sky. I don't know why I said it yeah. like that. It is pretty super. Is. Have you seen the moon recently? It is gorgeous. But there's also going to be a lunar eclipse to darken it. Hmm. This is a rare sight. There are two more supermoons still to come this year. The next one on October 17th. And next month is looking like a busy one for the night sky. There'll also be the Orionids meteor shower and what could be the comet of the decade. Called C2023A3, returning after 80,000 years.